Thank you for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast, hosted by entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist, Jerome D. Love. We are committed to teaching you how to build wealth so that you can build your community. At the Black Money Tree, our goal is to empower wealth creation and create economic self-sufficiency in order to empower generations to come. Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never enjoy. Season one is powered by Wells Fargo Bank. Welcome to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Hi, my name is Jerome D. Love, and I want to welcome you to the Black Money Tree Podcast. The Black Money Tree is serious about helping you to build wealth so that you can build your community. Now, when it comes to wealth building, wealth building can come in many different ways. Some invest in real estate, some in the stock market. But whatever you're doing, you need to make sure you're investing, doing something to build your wealth. So our goal is to give you tips and tools that's going to help you along your journey. Today, I'm really excited. We have a young lady here who is doing some amazing things in some untraditional ways, and we're going to talk about that today. Her name is Miss Latasha Saunders. She is the founder and president of Her Grails. Uh, I'm going to let her introduce herself and her company and explain to you a little bit about what she's doing. But let me tell you, she's doing some big things in the community, and I'm happy to uh, be associated with her. Tasha, thank you so much for joining us on the Black Money Tree Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Jerome. I'm really excited to be on. Oh, well, thank you so much. So let's talk back. We're, the Black Money Tree is about money. Yeah. It's about wealth. I want to know, I always I ask people pretty much the same question. Growing up, what did you learn about money? Well, uh, what were you taught in your household about money and growing well? Um, I think having several streams of income has always been instilled. Um, my parents always had a regular job and then they had something on the side. Okay. So always that, like having several streams of income, having multiple, I guess, jobs per se. And so that was always really early on instilled into my brain. Um, and then making sure, I think also... Property is always a huge thing my dad always instilled, owning property, um, whether it be in different states, because he also owns property in other states, but also definitely where, you know, in the same city of where you live. So let me ask you this. It, your parents were into all these things. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that they taught you things? When I say that, did they sit down and talk to you? Like my parents really didn't talk yeah. to me a whole bunch. They did a lot of stuff that, and they say more is caught than is taught. But right. they teach you those things or did you just observe those things and kind of pick them up on your own? That's a great question because I often say like a lot was taught indirectly. Yeah. But definitely they didn't sit me down and say like, hey, this is how we make our money. This is how you should do this. No, it was just me witnessing what they did. So absolutely not. I think even... Up until recently, they kind of told me about like property and management and investing. And, you know, so over the years, it was always just through watching them, you know, and then seeing what they do. So that was a great question. I feel like we learn a lot indirectly from our parents, uh, whether good and bad sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but definitely when it comes to money, um, I also learn from mistakes. Right. So you, you see what they did maybe wrong. And so definitely wasn't sat down and taught it like <laughs> This is what you should do. It's interesting that you say that. I don't feel, my dad taught me a lot um, indirectly. Right. And I always say, my dad said, boy, if you want to have money, spend less than you make. Okay, I love he, that. He would just give you basic, simple right. wisdom like exactly. that. Um, but for me, with my kids, I kind of felt like I wanted to do more teaching. Mm -hmm. And with the platform that I have with Texas Black Expo, we run a camp called Aspire Youth Entrepreneur Summer Camp. Yes. So my kids have been to every camp. Oh, I love the that. The older ones now help to coordinate the camp. So I've had my kids write papers. Yeah. They have to uh, do budgets. I love that. We have monthly audits. So I do a <laughs> lot of uh, direct <laughs> yes. teaching for my kids. Not to say that what my dad did was bad, of but I'm kind of like, I'm going to kind of up the ante. I'm right. going to make sure my kids is just really on of top course. of it. So now, interestingly enough, you and I, you've been on my radar a couple years. I saw what you was doing with the summit here yes. in town and we connected, I guess, a little bit, almost two years ago, a year and a half or so ago. Mm -hmm. And you helped me with my uh venturing mm -hmm. into this whole digital social yes. media world. And you were uh, so phenomenal in terms of of uh, what you were able to help me with. And um, I remember early on, you told me, I never forget the conversation. You said, I don't think I'm about that entrepreneur life. Oh my and gosh. Now, 
And now <laughs> here you are. You have your own business doing yes. some big things. Tell me a little bit how you came from that tradition. What was in your mind at that point? And less than a year later, yes. now you are full-time, yes. got your own business, signed a major deal with Jordan Brand. <laughs> Tell me how all that happened. Man, isn't that so funny? I yeah. used to say that all the time to everyone. Even on yeah. panels I sat on, I was like, listen, I'm down to the girls and the dudes that could do entrepreneurship, but it ain't for me. So I think um, it just divine timing, um, I still would have never have planned this, but I worked and planned I mean it worked out for how it was supposed to work out so it went how it was supposed to go I guess um I was with when we were first started working I was with another company I was at an event venue and so I was like okay this is cool but I think at a certain point you're like this is not something I want to do forever this is not something that I love and so I had my company already and I think it was just again a little side project a hobby I was like I don't know if I could really make this full time um, I, that was always the goal, but I never thought it would be like, I guess, fruition that soon. Um, but yeah, I feel like it happened uh, literally July 4th. So it's very, very recent. Mm. Um, I separated from the company I was with and I was like, OK, well, maybe I don't need to find another job. Maybe yeah. I could just do her grills full time. And literally in the two months, it was like campaign after campaign after campaign after campaign. And it was a lot of money rolling. And I'm like, okay, this is more money than I made the whole year at my other job or any yeah. job for, till this day. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is like a sign. I don't need to do anything yeah. else but this. Let's put in all my energy, all my time, all my money into this and build this. So it was accidental, but it happened. So talk a little bit about Her Grails for those that don't know yes. what Her Grails is. And, you yes. know, I told you last time we talked, I was like, what really do you do? Are you a model? Oh my what God. is it that you do? So tell us a little bit about Her Grails and educate those that don't know what it is you do and what Her Grails is. Yes. Yeah, so funny. Question of the year. Everyone's like, what do you do? Even my mom. I feel like she still tells people I sell shoes. But <laughs> no. So Her Grails essentially is we throw sneaker events tailored towards women. Um, but it's grown into more of a platform as well where we inform, highlight, support other women in the industry. And then even grown further where we're almost like an agency. We just executed a campaign where from beginning to end, we found the talent, set, you know, creative direction for all the photo shoots and then executed it on social media. So it's a lot more than just throwing events, but that's really what at the, the bottom, that's what we do. And then there's other layers. So we're based out of Houston, Texas. We've been throwing events. It'll be four years, February. We host several events throughout the year. You've been to a couple. Our anniversary is always really fun. And it's really just to create a space for women to feel comfortable um, to come and hang out and wear kicks. Because I think there really was, there was such a void for that. Even with me working at Sneaker Summit for five years, like a lot of women didn't feel comfortable coming to the show. And then there wasn't any vendors. So I, it made sense. These women aren't coming because there's nothing for us. It's only men's stuff. So Her Grails, I'm so excited to see where it's going, especially in the short amount of time since July, but especially since the beginning. Uh, you know, we've had maybe 10 people come to our yeah. first couple of events and now it's hundreds. So I'm really excited and looking forward to the future. Her Grails, I think, is what's needed. And um, I feel like no one can touch us when it comes to events. No, I, I think that's a phenomenal story. And I, I won't put all your business out there, <laughs> but you got some major contracts yes. with Jordan Brand yes. and so many more. Yeah. And if you remember, one of the first things I told you when you told me about the contract, you remember what I told you? Yes. What did I he say? He was like, well, can we be Michael Jordan? And can <laughs> I said... <laughs> I wasn't even talking about that. Oh, I wasn't what were you talking, talking about, about? I was talking. I was like, no, <laughs> sir, baby steps. No, I was talking about. I was telling you about investing your money. Oh, you did. Don't yeah, that make too. sure it, just because you got this big lump of money, don't yes, spend it all in one you place. You sure did. Yes. And I also told you to not, you know, try to start buying some real estate. Yes, put yourself you in a position to buy some real estate. Absolutely. That's what I was talking about. Oh. You just gonna put me on blast in front of all of Sorry, America. I <laughs> I can't believe you did that, I thought that's that, what Tasha. you were talking about. Sorry. <laughs> no, but you are doing some big things. And Thank you're you. really, 
uh, surrounding yourself with some uh, a lot of people like when we was meeting and you kind of pulled out a business card a guy you was talking to and I was like oh my goodness that's my real estate mentor oh, so wow. one of the people that actually mentored me in the real estate game is kind of oh, yes. in your network uh, Preston and, and, and his team mm-hmm. they were the ones that were instrumental in helping me in building uh, uh, my business in terms of real estate mm-hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about social media okay. and the whole culture that surrounds it. Um, yeah. One of the things that's challenging for me sometimes is I think social media is all about, I, I wrote an article for Black Enterprise and it was called Imager Economics. Mm-hmm. And I talked about how most people say they want economics and they want substance, but it's all about image. Mm-hmm. And social media has put that on steroids. Yeah. How do you... Uh, I guess reconcile the two and stay balanced to making sure that it's not all about taking photographs and yeah. the image and making sure you're focusing on your finances. Yeah, social media is huge. I think because again, you can make money from social media, right? Yeah. I think it has a stigma of bad, and but it's really good. Social media, especially for marketing purposes, it's essentially free, um, and it, you know, content creators can you know get huge campaigns from. The, I mean, essentially, that's how I did it. Uh, Instagram is our only social media and we've come this far because of it. So I think that monetizing social media is huge. And um, especially for content creators, I'm an accidental influencer. So I've not only gotten campaigns through her grails, but also Tasha Kwan. And I think that knowing how much these other influencers are making or these other brands are making is huge, right? Because some people do it for free. Some people are like, oh yeah, I'll take a picture for you and post it. But no, you can make money off of this and you should, especially for these big brands like Jordan, Nike, Foot Locker, Adidas. Yes, they need to be paying me for this content. Yeah. Um, And they do because it's that important. They, especially our niche is so niche. Like we tailored towards women in sneakers, right? It's super neat. So it only makes sense that if they're doing something with women in sneakers, they're calling on us, especially in Houston. So I think that financially, you know, you some campaigns cost money, right? You need to buy outfits, buy shoes, look good, makeup. But if you do it right, the brand can pay for all that. And then you get a check just yeah. for social media. So I think it's huge and then again making your social media presence is a big deal. People like to see who's behind the brand. And yeah. I learned that a few years ago um even with her grails. Like people want to see who's behind this brand. I think I even told you that. I was yeah. like they want to know if you're a jerk or not. They want to know if you're cool, if you're fun. And also like putting a face to their brand, I think just people love, especially in Houston. I think people want to see you out, see you talking, see you having fun, and especially on these social media stories. They're like, "Oh, she's out here." I want to try that. Or where did she just go to eat? I want to go eat that. So, man, I think social media is so huge. And I I can only see it getting huger, especially with TikTok and Reels. And it's some some of these people really can do some good content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. So tell me this. um, Sneakers, Jordan (laughs) brand, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody. Yeah. You know, um, is her we're in a country of course predominantly white of yes. course you are predominantly black yes but her girls is for everyone yes talk a little bit about that and i know us on the flip side normally from non-african americans that's black expo and black money tree mm-hmm. doing so we've had people say well you know that's racist mm-hmm. what if we had a white expo or what do mm-hmm. we have you know how do you navigate that and do you have certain people feeling like You need to just be doing this for the black community or how do you navigate that? Oh my gosh, that's an interesting uh, question. We've had a couple talks on this because I feel like I would be remiss to only tailor it towards black women because I'm not just a black woman. But most of our content, I always try and bring in black creatives, black and brown, and then even events. We like to collaborate with black and brown women. And I think at the end of the day, women is really the core of it. Um, and then definitely putting on my minority sisters. Cause again, I'm also Asian. So putting on my Asian sisters with venues, balloons, flowers, whatever we need, these vendors. But I don't think a lot of people haven't ever asked like, Oh, you know, is this for black women only? Cause I think they get it. Um, our niche is small enough. We don't need to make it even smaller. Right. There are other, um, brands that I've seen in other platforms that are directed towards black women, which is great. But again, it wouldn't make sense. I'd be almost hypocritical. Yeah. Um, and I think that 
it it's for everyone because we even allow men to come to some of our events yeah but at the core we tailor towards women and we support women and we highlight women and we make sure women are at the forefront because we are that's our platform right so it'd be like again i say this often to other brands you cannot have a man behind something that's for women yeah, yeah and yeah. that's even with nike any of these big brands it doesn't make any sense and they don't know what, sorry you wouldn't know yeah. so it, it especially with white men we can't have white men at the head of these companies yeah. the nikes adidas whatever have you uh trying to bring us in it doesn't make sense at the end of the day black women and men built sneakers and sneaker industry yeah so so let me ask you this I, this is just my perspective i okay. could be ignorant Oh, Lord. The sneaker culture is associated with the hip-hop culture. Yeah. The hip-hop culture came out of African-American mm -hmm. communities, yeah. mostly street, mostly mm -hmm. hood. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lot of these diverse mm -hmm. sneaker events, mm -hmm. it almost comes across as other cultures are trying to, yeah, take mm -hmm. our culture. How do you respond to that? Well, What's your thoughts on that? Again, it was sneakers didn't just come from hip hop. I think it all correlates music art, you know, it all correlates in sneakers, but there's a lot. I mean, especially with, especially sneakers and the trends, it, a lot has come from Asian influence. Japan has murdered us when it comes to sneaker fashion and brands, you know, Bape and Marikami and all these. So I think it's, it's a fine line, but because we could say that about any music industry, right? Yeah. Country, anything comes from the black, uh, off the backs of blacks. So I think that it's a fine line because uh, we do get a, I mean, not to say that other cultures built sneakers because I will say f forever and always that black people have really made sneakers what it is today. But I think that we are very heavily influenced, influenced by other cultures and other ethnicities um and so it but it all brings it back around so that's why sneakers is really i mean even b-boys and b-girls it all comes back around to sneakers and then where it is now yeah yeah no that's good that's good so th this has been a great discussion i mean it's been a joy having you um and i'm really looking forward to your success thank you um, in the future and just for everybody else the reason i asked about michael jordan because i say he's one of the wealthiest <laughs> men in this country he's a successful businessman and yeah. he needs to be on the black money tree he i would i didn't just want an autograph no it's like okay so we'll speak it into even existence. though i do want an autograph so oh if you're gosh. out there michael <laughs> I, would, I would take an autograph too so no we'll speak it into existence he'll so, be on so in closing, yeah. let, let's just, what else do you, would you share for, for that young up and coming entrepreneur that wants to be a success, wants yes. to get started? What are the one or two tips that you would give them in terms of being a success yes. and building wealth? Oh my gosh, I love this question. Um, one, stay true to yourself. Uh, a lot of people would be like, you can't make money in sneakers. Here I am. Um, stay true to yourself. Be authentic. You don't have to be fake. Please don't fake the funk. This is really who I am in real life. Jerome can attest. I wear sneakers. I'm a tomboy. This is where, really what I'm about. Um, so being authentic and not changing for anything just because you see other people making money off something else. Like, be true to yourself. Also, for especially for women, we're not really as, we're not taught a lot that men are taught at a young age. So just making sure when you do start a business, start it correctly. Learn from my mistakes. Get your LLC, get your trademark, get your website, everything done professionally, correctly. Get a professional logo. Pay for a professional logo. I have to repeat this so many times. Please pay for a professional logo. Uh, get the vector for that logo. But just, again, the little things, right? People don't really tell you. Um, this is very important when it comes to, I think, black-owned businesses and women-owned businesses to have it really truly be owned and not just an idea and intellectual property is one thing but actually having it in physical form is huge so i guess those are my two key okay points more than two. Oh, was it more than two <laughs> we'll stay authentic and make sure your ducks are in a row so now let me ask you this you you brought up something that that begs another question mm -hmm. you talked about women not having i don't remember how you said it something like women not having as much access to information yeah. as, mm -hmm. as men when you look at many studies, mm -hmm. depending upon which ones you look mm -hmm. at, African-American women's net worth is negative in many reports, but it's certainly at the bottom considering black, white, yep. men, women, whatever. What do you attribute that to and what can we do to make a change? A you know? ton. Um, the pay gap is real. I think people yep. really think that's 
fake and it's super real. There are men that are making much more than women, their counterparts doing the exact same work. So I think that's huge. Also, again, maybe not doing it the right way. Yeah. A lot of businesses fail, right? What's the statistic? The first for one year? I think uh, 80% fail within the first year and then exactly. the remainder, uh, 50% are closed within five years. Exactly. Yeah. So I think not knowing, again, taxes is huge. Like not knowing these things. And again, women, we're not really taught, oh, we need to have fr franchise taxes. You need to have taxes on your employees. And so I think that's huge. Men um, kind of are taught that from their fathers or whoever is in their life even their mentors we're not really we were more especially now it's different but then and so i think no um women are now we are i think they said black women are the highest growing rate for entrepreneurs and i think that's because we're finally realizing from our counterparts and i've learned a lot from men it's not just women um and i think that's why because i've had my father and other male mentors teach me what to do so i think it's there's a lot of factors but i think at the core is not knowing what to do and then also that we're not paid correctly yeah. even in this form white i've seen white females paid higher than me in a lot of stuff i've seen me be overlooked for several things we're yeah. just now getting the recollection yeah. it's been year again i've been in the game like 10 years yeah <laughs> so yeah. her grails has been four but i've been doing this for years yeah so yeah. No, that's good stuff. So what else? Where where can we find you? Give us your handles. Yes. When's the next event? Yes. Give us all that good information. Thank you. So hergirls.com is our website. You can find the new and upcoming events there. Um, Her Grails on Instagram is where we post everything. Our next event is our anniversary. Um, and it's the first time he's saying this, but it's going to be a huge weekend. We normally okay. do. We went last year. It's one day. It's one party. But this year, I think, well, next year, February, it's going to be a whole weekend. Okay. We're going to have a Rockets event. I'm throwing the first shot uh, at okay. a game. So yeah. it's going to be a whole weekend. So everyone has to come. February 4th through the 6th is going to be the three days, and we're turning up to celebrate our birthday. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tasha. Thank you. So there you have it. There are so many ways to build wealth, and uh, one of the ways is in the sneaker industry. <laughs> I, I just learned a whole lot. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot as well. Make sure for more tips and tools on building your wealth, go to theblackmoneytree.com. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, on Apple, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, and get a copy of our new book, Closing the Wealth Gap, How to Build Wealth Within Black Communities by Investing in Real Estate. It has the capacity to help you increase your net worth and change the life for you and for your family and your future. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Don't forget to like and share this video. And if you want more content like this, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll see you next time.